And yeah, here, so parallel comp. Yeah. Here I think we talk yeah. more about the concepts of parallelism, and each code is different. And at least I hope that I learned from Simo what the differences of the kind of parallelism are and how to approach each of them. So yeah, how do we, what are the different parallel models? Yeah, well, actually we have already encountered one of them and that was the day embarrassingly parallel uh, model. And we already did that with the array uh, structures. So basically parallel in, in a cluster sense, uh, like in a HPC sense, parallel means that you just do something uh, individually, like you do do separate things separately. <laughs> like you don't run a serial job, like we were talking about serial being from one end to another. Mm -hmm. Parallel means that you do uh, separate pieces uh, individually. Mm -hmm. uh, and the embarrassingly parallel that we did with the array job. So if your job is something that can be split up in a natural, like your whole workflow can be split up in a natural way, uh, then the embarrassingly parallel is probably the most efficient way of parallelizing mm -hmm. your job. Uh, so you shouldn't think about these parallelizations unless you consider that one first. Uh, however, when it comes to computing, uh, parallel has another meaning as well, like outside of the HPC context. And that is uh, that you run uh, multiple workers or multiple CPU cores uh, together so that they they work together to solve one task. So in, in one job, uh, like embarrassingly parallel, uh, like in the array jobs, we had individual jobs that weren't communicating with each other. We have individual CPUs that were doing their own stuff with their own seeds or data sets or whatever. Uh, but here we are going to be working so that um, each each job has has multiple CPUs assigned to it, and it will uh, utilize them together to so solve one problem. And this is usually used uh, in two ways. So there's this shared memory or multiprocessing parallelism, mm -hmm. and then there's the MPI parallelism, which is this message, message uh, passing programming parallelism. And these are completely separate things. Mm -hmm. So if you think about your computer uh, right now, your laptop, if you run, let's say, R or Python or MATLAB on your computer, you have only one computer with multiple CPUs. Modern, C modern laptops are, they have multiple CPUs that they can use. So they, uh, you, they all the CPUs have access to the same memory together. So that there comes the name shared memory parallelism. Mm -hmm. the, all of the CPUs can access the same memory and then they can work together on the same machine. So many of the uh, like programs that, are, <laughs> that you're working with on your laptop mm -hmm. are similar. You can run them in a similar vein in Triton. Yeah. Uh, so that they can use many CPUs at the same time. Because could you uh, even so let's say, say could you even say that many programs these days can easily use shared memory, whether it's games yes. or like yes. desktop applications and so on. Yes, if you if you ever ever like if you for example uh, are in a Zoom meeting and you look at uh, with like top or edge top, you look at. The, mm -hmm. the CPU utilization, you will see that there's multiple of these Zoom uh, processes running in the background. And this is multiprocessing. So you have multiple the individual processes running, doing the same thing. So running the Zoom application. And mm -hmm. for example, in HPC context, if you're running Python, the Python, uh, especially the NumPy libraries that you usually use, uh, they are written so that they can do parallelization. So they can, you can run uh, the Python so that it utilizes multiple CPUs at the same time. You can also run Python multiprocessing, like the multiprocessing module in Python code uh, that you can run multiple Python, mm. individual Python uh, parts that mm -hmm. do some stuff and then collect the information together. Right. You, in R, 
you can use, for example, the parallel package that starts multiple R workers, does mm -hmm. something, and then combines the uh, results. In MATLAB, you have the parallel pool that basically starts multiple processes, yeah. does something, and then collects it again. But all of these are done within one computer. So you have one uh, shared system where you uh, share stuff mm -hmm. together. Uh, and in all of these, uh, and this is different to the MPI processing that we'll be talking about later, but you have to think about like when you're uh, running uh, your MATLAB code, your Python code, whatever on your laptop, you're running it on one system. And mm -hmm. these are a multiprocessing code. Uh, like we should also note that uh, like all in all of these kinds of codes, there's like what Richard is showing there, there's these uh, losses when you're running this kind of a program, because there's always some part of the program, let's say IO, for example, that cannot be done in parallel. And those parts need to be done in serial. Uh, so the job mm -hmm. has to wait. And, and these, uh, there's always these kinds of this even theoretical computer computer science like laws that you can't put you can't get uh, like infinite parallelization but you will get some uh, sort of like a, some sort of fraction mm -hmm. uh, of improvement so basically if you add four CPUs to your job mm -hmm. you don't necessarily get four times the improvement but you will uh, get something like 3 to 3.5 or mm -hmm. something like that because there will always be parts that are not uh, yeah and even if I, it's not even if it is good like that if you just write a code and don't specifically make it parallel it won't be parallel at all like it won't even be able to try to do anything and if you find some yes. random code someone else has made you can take it and give it 10 CPUs but if it's not able to use 10 CPUs, then it won't do anything. It'll just use one yes. and you've wasted all the other ones. And not only that, yes. it has to be able to detect that you've given it 10 CPUs as opposed to one CPU and as opposed to every CPU on the machine, which may not be allocated to you. So, yes. yeah. Uh, if you so so basically when, whenever you're same as with the GPU jobs, when you're running parallel jobs, you need to know what your code is actually trying to do. Whether it's trying to do mm -hmm. shared memory parallelization or this MPI parallelization, yeah. and it, well, how it behaves. So, but so these shared uh, memory yeah. parallelizations, and they are is, usually very. Yeah. This is one of the most annoying things when someone asks me for help in using making something parallel. I ask, what are you running? They're like this. And I'm like, okay, let's see if it's parallel. And I go to the instructions of that program, and then it doesn't say how to control the parallelism or how it works, which makes our effort in running it on the cluster a lot more difficult. So if you're making code that you want others to be able to use, remember to document this thing and actually think about it and control it. So, yeah. Um, yes, so we... there's, there's even more like these different uh, complications usually caused by this term multi-threaded, multi-process. Mm -hmm. uh, multi yeah. Usually it doesn't matter that much. There's some examples there where it might affect uh, so, so basically, threads are these small pieces of comp like small uh, computing tasks that you can do, and and processes are something that mm -hmm. run these threads. And you can run one process can run multiple of these threads, and you can run multiple processes at the same time. And yeah. it, it can get quite complicated. At uh, but usually, what you want to do is just to make certain that you choose one. Uh, way of parallelization. Mm -hmm. You don't want to create this situation where you have launched, let's say, you have reserved four CPUs and then you launch four processes and all of those four processes launch four uh, <laughs> threads. So mm -hmm. you don't want to do that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So because then uh, you will get into this situation where all of the different threads will compete mm -hmm. of the same resources. Yeah. 
So usually, uh, for example, here, uh, like if you're using something like Python straight out of the box, you can use this OMP number of threads to set mm -hmm. the number of underlying threads that, that mm -hmm. it can use for parallelization. If you are using something like Python multiprocess or R parallel or uh, MATLAB parallel pool, you want to set this number of threads underneath it to one mm -hmm. so that uh, you will uh, uh, you won't get this kind of multiplication that can happen. Mm -hmm. But so let's look yeah. at the, We have yeah. lots of other examples here, but to me, this is a very specific thing for each person's code. So is there anything here that's worth demonstrating? Together? I think we can demo quickly, the, for example, the Python OpenMP parallelization. We can show this. Like this so one. This is a good example of, yeah, this is a good example okay. of what what we might have. So so here we have a, yeah. a small script over here, mm -hmm. that by, a small Python script that uh, calculates the well, it, it, it just uh, does a, a matrix inverse of this big array. So it's just like, it doesn't do anything mm -hmm. reasonable, but it does something that's uh, uh, somewhat heavy. Yeah. Somewhat okay. heavy to calculate. So it takes some time to calculate. Mm -hmm. So where would this be? I think it's in the uh, Python, Python okay, open. Probably here. Example. Yeah. So I yes. will change to the HPC examples directory. So um, now if you look at the example below the S of the S run statement. Mm -hmm. mm, if I scroll down. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. You will see there that you can you can specify the CPUs per task uh, a parameter uh, mm -hmm. that tells the Slurm to allocate multiple CPUs for this this task for this this job. So that means that uh, when you're running this job, uh, you will utilize multiple CPUs. Of course, you're not necessarily, you don't know whether it utilizes them if you don't know that the code actually uses them, mm -hmm. but, but you can ask for multiple CPUs. So it's just one flag similar to the GRES statement uh, you can specify the CPUs per task and you will get multiple yeah. CPUs. Uh, you should also put the export OMP oh, proc okay. bind. What that, that does is to tell the uh, Python or the libraries underneath the Python to, to use the different CPUs basically. And then when you ask for the CPUs, It will uh, it will utilize all of the CPUs. Okay. Python. Okay. Let's see if it works. Okay. It's skewed. It's allocated. Can't now remember how long it takes to <laughs> run, but basically it's it's just another flag. Like if you if you need to use multiple CPUs, you just need to specify the number of CPUs you need. Okay, let's try the same command. Okay, let's look at the history actually. Yeah, let's look at the history. Mm. So so you can see there that the code uh, printed how many CPUs it was using because well, it was written in the code job ID and if we go on down we see if you can get the runtime and the total CPU time together in the here we go yeah so here you can see that the total uh, the wall time so so how much time it actually took like in in real world it took 16 seconds to run this job but the CPU time used was 30 seconds so it was actually doing something uh, for 30 CPU seconds. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, we ask for two CPUs, it runs for 15 seconds, it used 30 CPU seconds. So it seems to be that it, it utilized both of these. 
And by using this SF command, we can then look at what is the CPU utilization. And we see that the CPU efficiency was 93%. So we saw, we can see that it actually utilized all of the CPUs. Let's mm -hmm. try the same command with uh, additional CPUs. So put like four, four CPUs okay. there. And let's see whether we get, uh, what sort of a uh, performance we get. So changing. So, so basically to... then we just switch the CPUs per four. task for four. So if we think about it, the total runtime was 30 seconds. So we di should divide it by four. So we expect it to be se something like seven, seven and a half seconds. But then we know that there's going to be losses anyway. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's not 7.5, it was 9.7. So there's some serial part that could not be parallelized by the code. Mm -hmm. And this is like an, um, how could I say, like a, uh, yeah, this is like a um, example where where the the parallelization is at maximum because it's doing something that can be very easily parallelized, which is these matrix operations. But in many cases, if you're doing something, it, it, the parallelization can be much worse. Uh, but 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 what what can we learn from this is that in many of these like easy languages like Python and R, you can easily just ask for more CPUs and see whether you get the efficiency uh, increase. So you can see here that the efficiency increase was, uh, efficiency was 90%. So mm -hmm. you can try uh, and see whether it works. If it doesn't work, then uh, it doesn't work. So I can keep going up until the efficiency gets too low and then realize that, yes. okay, now I have to stop adding more CPUs. Yes. But if you think about it, uh, let's say the, theoretically that the code we were testing now, if that would have taken an hour to run, we would have mm -hmm. wasted 10% of the hour. So six minutes of the hour would have been wasted now. Mm -hmm. And let's say we want to run four instances of the same thing. Mm -hmm. We could run four jobs of uh, that uh, that would take take this uh, like we could run uh, four uh, 50 minute jobs that would take mm -hmm. totally an hour basically or we could run an array job of four that would uh, take an hour also but we would get better efficiency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so in in cases where you yeah. have to think about whether you want to like speed up or make make one job faster mm -hmm. uh, to run uh, so, versus the whole thing to run faster, you might need to do the array parallelization yeah. instead if you want to like get the maximum efficiency, Got maximum it, yeah. proof. So basically, to... it's better to run the smallest job you need, but then run more of them. Yes, unless of course the runtime gets so long that it gets hard to get through the queue. Right. So let's say yeah. if the runtime mm -hmm. takes a day or and you need to results to be done today, then you might need to increase the parallelization. Right. But mm -hmm. usually the parallelization is only well, it's only it only works when it works, and you shouldn't <laughs> necessarily uh, you should know whether your code actually supports it. Yeah. Okay, okay. but there's the other form of parallelization that is much more complicated, but it's common to these uh, uh, HPC systems and supercomputers. And it, this is the MPI parallelization. And this is something that if your code doesn't support it, it doesn't support it, it, it will say in the team that whether it supports it or not. Uh, like this is, but this is something that basically the supercomputers use to, to do uh, thousands of nodes worth of like mm -hmm. you can you can scale it up to huge exascale computations mm -hmm. uh, but there will be of course different complications when you're doing that but mpi basically does is that you have a huge bunch of uh, different tasks working together and they communicate with this mpi uh, message passing interface mm -hmm. and use it but and this is basically going from one instead of you're working in one computer, like we were previously working, when we ask for multiple CPUs, 
in this case, we are asking for a number of workers that can end up on any kinds of computers. Mm -hmm. So, so we're working across the node, like actual physical, uh, physical machine boundaries. We're working with more than one machine. And, right. and this is, uh, for this to work, you need to specify a certain MPI library. So the, uh, they are not compatible uh, with each other. So, so you should specify the specific library. So for example, open MPI, you need to compile your task or your code to use that library. And then you need to give it this end tasks option of how many workers you need. And you will get like uh, this, they will be distributed to the cluster and they will communicate, communicate with each other. So mm -hmm. many physics codes use this. There's also the MPI for Pi package that uses this if you do MPI parallelization in Python, but it's complicated there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's other libraries in R and MATLAB. Well, in MATLAB mm -hmm. quite rarely uses MPI, but, but there's other packages in other languages uh, in Julia, for example, that uses mm -hmm. uh, MPI as well to do multi-node processing. But this is like more complicated and you need to read or go to a course on MPI if you want to use this, if you don't, if your code doesn't yeah. automatically support it. So you need to go to a course if you want to write a code that uses it. Yes. But I guess if you're code... using some, if you're using something that we have already installed, like a, a, a paragraph, uh, like the OpenFOAM or CP2K or uh, uh, LAMPS or something like, like these kind of physics codes, they are already compiled by us. And in those cases, you know, don't usually need to uh, like learn how to code MPI mm -hmm. yourself. You can just use them, but then you need to specify what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, how many tasks you want, mm -hmm. uh, how many workers you want. But I, I want to reiterate, if you're working with like these shared memory programs, don't specify the tasks number because mm -hmm. otherwise you will get this into this situation where Slurm will start you multiple copies of the same job. So multiple copies that don't know that the others exist because mm -hmm. they don't understand the MPI uh, and you will, uh, well, you will confuse the system and at worst case you will write uh, write to yeah. the same data files and cause all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with parallel parallel pool, MATLAB, uh, Python multiprocessing, mm -hmm. open MP, don't use the tasks option at all. Yeah. If you're using MPI, use the MPI, uh, well, use the end tasks option then. Mm-hmm. So here, here in the in the example, there's a simple like C and Fortran MPI hello world examples. Uh, we don't need to necessarily go through them, but we could look at the SBAT script a bit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So what you usually want to do when, with MPI job is to is to specify a certain number of tasks and may, maybe specify the constraint of the CPU architecture that you want to do that all of the nodes end up on a similar kind of a CPU architecture. Mm -hmm. You might, uh, there are, if you look at Slurm features output, there are different architectures for like Hashwell, Broadwell and, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. everything like that. And you might need to, you might want to specify certain of those architectures so that you know that uh, the, the, you can estimate the runtime easier when you specify one of those uh, specific node architectures when you're running yeah. these big jobs. So these MPI jobs can go up to like hundreds of tasks, uh, whereas the CPU tasks are limited by the number of CPUs in the actual machines. So uh, mo all of our nodes have either 14, 20, 24 or 40 CPUs, like physical CPUs in the computer. Mm -hmm. And that is the maximum for the shared memory uh, parallelization. For the MPI parallelization, you usually want to reserve full nodes or half nodes or something like that so that the performance is the best. So what you usually mm -hmm. need to do is, is ask for multiple, uh, well, you ask for a certain amount of nodes and certain amount of tasks mm -hmm. and then you 
yeah get it there okay so yeah over here Let's is see. the instructions if you're going to be running these mpi programs here's instructions on how to sp spread the node uh, tasks evenly with these number of nodes and the number of tasks per node. Yeah. In monitoring performance, we already demonstrated the SF mm. program. Yeah. I think we could, like, before we, if we run the first, last examples, uh, like, of running this, uh, some of these uh, the jobs. The exercises here? Or maybe or we don't. Up above. Uh, the the after like if we run the the different examples uh, like what we were talking about running these MATLAB scripts and mm -hmm. Python scripts, but we could demonstrate the first one uh, the first exercise. Here we so go. So this, ah, is, this, this is a yeah, good this one is, to do. Could be yeah. So okay. there are two really different options here. So like what we are going to be running the CPUs per task, which is the shared memory paradigm. Then there's the number of tasks which is the uh, MPI paradigm, and then a uh, number of nodes, mm -hmm. which is the, yeah. yeah. If we if so just plain, here run, yeah, see S -run host plain name. host name, you can see that it runs on uh, CSL48 and you get one one task running there. Oh, so one, one, one job was running. Yeah. So here we add in CPUs per task four. And, and we you see will one get, host name. Oh, yeah. So you will get one process that has access to four CPUs. Of course, the host name command doesn't utilize those CPUs, but it, it still runs only one program. But if you run it with the number of tasks uh, set to four, you will notice that uh, well, you will notice something else happening, mm -hmm. which is now like if you would run an MPI program. Mm, uh, two dashes. Yeah. So yeah. now you see that you get four responses. So this is because like when you're running with the N tasks, Slurm starts four different processes and it expects these processes to understand the MPI communication and to be able to discuss with each other what's what's the this what's the part of each individual process of the whole. But if your code doesn't understand MPI, if if it doesn't use MPI, mm -hmm. this will mean it will start for competing like processes that all do the same thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you're trying to do simple like CPU parallelization, don't use the end tasks because you will get mistakes like this and it will uh, mm -hmm. tank the performance and it will at worst case cause like issues with IO writing. And if you specify nodes for, you will see that they all end up in different nodes. Mm -hmm. So so when using simple parallelization techniques like uh, like what you use on, on your own computer, please use the the CPUs per task. That's all you need. You you can mm -hmm. just specify that, and then you can uh, try to figure out how to get the best efficiency out of the system. And you can come and discuss us if you are unsure whether the program is using the CPUs correctly or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. What if we combine them? So, yeah, and task I think you will get the same results. The same yeah. thing. Yeah. But if we ask for 16 tasks. So in this case, you will get 16 tasks, but they're not evenly distributed. So yeah. so uh, this is why you, when you're using the nodes, if you're running MPI codes, you should specify that uh, you want them to be distributed as evenly as possible, because otherwise you will get these performance uh, dips when all of these tasks will try to communicate with the, with the other tasks. Uh, in the different nodes. So yeah. uh, when you're using, when we're running big MPI jobs, it might be a good idea also to ask us so that we can look at the, what is the best geometry uh, in the cluster, what is the best way of running mm -hmm. it. Okay. So okay. Um, what now? Do we, so we had this idea of demonstrating some 
Python, R, and MATLAB things. Should we take a quick break and then go to that? And I guess we're sort of out of time right now, but we've covered all the actual tutorials. And what we're about to do can easily be watched by video. The video recordings can be watched later equally to now. Yeah, but I'd, I'd want to uh, reiterate, the, like, like, make clear that, like, this day, it might seem that this day is, like, a huge jump in difficulty, and that's because it is, <laughs> of course, because the tasks uh, or the questions at hand are much more difficult and much more complex, and, and when you're scaling your stuff up to a bigger scale, it will uh, eventually become more complex. Mm -hmm. But if you felt like at home with the serial jobs. Uh, it's not a big walk from there to these other other parts uh, if you take it step by step. So what I recommend is that like, first getting a, a hand like hands on a touch on how to like run serial job one serial job in Triton. Mm -hmm. Then if you feel like you you can paralyze it with the array job, then try to paralyze with the array job. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you know that your code is capable of utilizing GPUs, uh, in-memory parallelization or shared memory parallelization or open MPI, MPI parallelization, mm -hmm. then discuss with us and we can help you get started with those. But you know yeah. that they exist, these possibilities exist. But the serial mm -hmm. job is really the, the most that most people need. Yeah. And if you would like, if you make an attempt and would like someone to look at it, come to our daily garage. So every day at one, we're in a Zoom meeting and you can, we can, we're happy to look at your things and give you some comments and then see what, um, like see if we have any suggestions. So you don't have to worry about doing it right all by yourself. We're here for you. Yes. Yeah, so should we have a small break and then put some extra material of how to like run a simple, uh, yeah, simple uh, workflow? Yeah. A simple. So we'll be back maybe in five minutes. You'll have some more examples. So please give us feedback either in HackMD or via the chat, whatever. Let us know how this went, how the material can be improved. Was this even on topic for what your needs were? Um, and so on. Any other courses you would like us to give? Um, yeah, this is very important. And we especially want bad feedback because we can do something about bad feedback. But good feedback will mean we just keep doing the same thing. Okay, thanks a lot for attending. Yeah, thanks.